Now that we have a site, we are going to publish some dashboard, some data to the site, right? So I've come up with these following dashboards, and the reason they're designed in a very specific way is because it will let us uh, it will let us test and use all the different features of Tableau Online, things like subscriptions and uh, all the collaboration tools, alerts, and we'll get to all of that. So let me show you how I built it. It is made up of three data sources. Let's look here. The first one is MBA. Uh, let's say start with this one, European Traffic Congestion. So in here, it's actually a very simple data set. That's kind of all it is. It's just city, country, the year, and the hours spent in congestion. That's really all there is to it. The MBA player salaries. All right, so you got player, you got the season, season split, team, etc. And this season split, I actually had to do that separately. So if I come back in here, I'll show you how I did it. So MBA player salaries, it's actually a calculation. So I'd come in here into season, custom split, and just go dash. And I'm just trying to get that first year out of that column. Right, and then after that, I converted it to a date just so I can get it in a date feature so I can do you know date type of visualizations, right? And then the last one is the superstore data set, which you're probably familiar with. And the only reason I've added this, we're not actually doing any visualizations using this data set, we're instead going to use that data set for the natural language processing and explain data, machine learning, AI, and all that later on in the course. Right, so I thought I'd build it all into one. So let's start with the player salaries. The first one we're going to do is the earnings by player, and this is quite simply right, the player, the team, and how much salary they made. That's all it is. And I just made it using the hierarchy slash tree map kind of view. Right? I have a team filter, which is not filtered for anything, it's just on everything. And that's it. So that's the first one. Very simple. Now that we've kind of gone past expert, you should be able to do all this. Earnings by team. Kind of the same thing, but instead of by player, we're doing it by team. So you can literally duplicate this first one, right? And change the, oh, and just get rid of player, I think. So if I get rid of that, that's basically the same thing. Pack the bubble, it's the same thing, right? Let's go back. All right, so that's just your by team salary and then earnings by season. So this is a little bit different. I used season one split <coughs> um, and then by year into the rows. So I can have individual years. And I use salary as the measure of how high it goes and just some coloring and some labels. That's it. And again, the only filter is team. Once I've got all of that, I put this dashboard together. So MBA salaries. And if I full screen it, that's one dashboard, that's another, and that's another. Okay. And the filter I applied was just the team. Okay. So if you don't remember, you just activate one of these analysis filters team and just make sure that this is applied to all the worksheet. Okay. So pretty basic stuff. That's the first one. The second one is the congestion in Europe. Now, this is not nasal congestion. No, this is not about the common cold. This is about traffic congestion. So I should probably call that traffic or something. But we'll make that adjustment when we get to Tableau Online. So this is only two things, that bar chart and a map. So pretty easy. Let's go look at country. Right, and in country, it's pretty simple. I double click the country, right? Make sure if, if you double click and it doesn't work, if you go to map, edit locations make sure this is set to uh, country or um, whatever it should be so this is usually where it can get messed up if you're not careful so just go ahead and check that and color coded by the number of hours spent in congestion that's it okay the next one is by city very similar but instead of country we're using city and it's a bar chart that's it chuck them on the same one and we have this dashboard and that's it Right. So the next thing we're going to do is the actual publication of the data set. So let's do that. So we begin by clicking server up here on the top and we do sign in. You can go directly to publish workbook and then it asks you to sign in, but I actually like to do this in two steps. Right. So we'll click on sign in 
and you're going to get this window. If you should set this, because we're using Tableau online, we're using Tableau online, right? If you've already got a Tableau server, just in case you know your company's already built it, then from here you would kind of put in your server location and everything like that. But because we're using Tableau online, we're going to click on this link right here and give it a few seconds. It's not going to instantly connect. Right? The mistake I see, like newbies, people who haven't done it before, they're like, click, 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 click. It's like, no, just let it do its thing. Just be patient. So t.online.test1. So we're logging in as ourselves. Okay, we'll put the password. Okay, and sign in. All right. Now, there are times where it has trouble connecting. If that's the case, just try again. A lot of the times, and it doesn't happen very often, it probably happens one in every 100 logins I do, where it just gets stuck in the internet, and then you just sign in again and it works. Okay? And then it's also going to say not responding. So you're going to think it's frozen. It's not frozen. Don't touch it. Just let it do its thing. If it still hasn't done anything in 10 minutes or 5, five 10 minutes, then it's probably frozen. But... I've never had that experience. Okay, so we now click on server again, and you can see that we are now signed in to Project Jellyman. Okay, and we're in US East. This is our server. Now we're going to publish it. So if I click on publish, and one thing I should add is we didn't hide any of these sheets, right? Usually when I design dashboards, I hide them, but the reason I don't is because I want to show you one of these features. So I go publish workbook. Because you can choose which sheets or which dashboards you publish, okay, using this feature here. So let me show you. Let's first choose where we're going to put it. So we're going. Let's put it into budget, the one that we created before, budget, and let's keep, give it a title. So we get NBA salaries and congestion. All right. Let's give it a description. Let's just give it the same. I'm being lazy. All right tags you can add and that's basically you can say nba salary salaries congestion europe it's so that when people are searching for on the platform they can find it uh, pretty much like instagram okay we go add and that's it so you just click outside we now got tags to make it easier this one which is sheets controls which sheets you want to do i usually only publish dashboards I very rarely do sheets unless I'm just doing a prototype very quickly, but 99% of the time I'm doing dashboards. And you can tell it's a dashboard because it has this symbol. And instead of, oops, hang on. Now instead of clicking and selecting and deselecting, you can actually just click on this only dashboards button right here. Okay, so let's go ahead and click that. And it will only publish those ones. So very easy, right? Or you can go none, you can go all, up to you. All right, so you just click outside permissions all right so once you publish your dashboard the permissions control who can see it who can't see it what they can and cannot do right so the way it works is you have what's called like an individual and then you have groups so let's say you have like multiple divisions five people in each of these divisions each of those divisions is a group and they will probably have a certain level of access at the group level right the group level permissions happen first okay but if it's unspecified in the group level right what settings you have then we will use the individuals settings okay if those are unspecified then it's just denied you just don't get that access so let's go and we'll, we'll do a quick one so let's say i'm going to adjust all users i can click on edit and from here you go you get all the features of what they can and cannot do. I could explain them, but it's easier once we get to the online part of what they actually do, right? So there's only really two main ones, allow and deny. If it's unspecified, it's pretty much deny, right? It's actually the same thing. So that is, is the same thing. The only time you would do unspecified is, again, if you're applying things at a group level, then you would just kind of leave this unspecified so that you can control the permissions of the entire group, right, as a group rather than individuals, especially if you have like a thousand users, two thousand users, it can get a bit annoying, right? So from here, you can just click yes or no at the all users level. You can also do it at a lower level. I haven't got any other users, but from here, you can click the users and say, no, I don't want this person to do this and that. And you can do this on the publish 
part right here or once you go into Tableau online you can also do it there okay so for now we're not going to do anything we're just going to leave it as is and go click outside right data sources the way the data sources work with publishing workbooks is that it kind of stitches them together so when it publishes it it publishes it as a single icon like a single file so if you imagine this is the dashboard it's connected to data sets on your local system these may exist separately you've got excel files and you've got a tableau workbook when you publish it packages them all together and creates a single file okay you can do it that way or you can publish them separately so why would you want to do that well when you publish the file separately people can connect to that data set and create further dashboards so when you update that data set everyone's dashboards update you can do that as well which again we will cover in a later stage but to give you an idea for now we're going to embed the data into the workbook itself so we leave them as is okay and these are excel files once you're using you know server connections like oracle or sql server it's going to ask you for you know passwords or whatever it may be it's specific to the data set you're using for now i'm going to leave it as is right data uh, data sources and uh, the next one is the show sheets as tabs now if we go back to our one and i open this what that means is if i come in here it just chooses whether to display this part okay the tabs why would you want to do that well if you're doing story mode you want the story mode buttons on the top to be displayed rather than these icons you don't really need them right whereas vice versa you probably want to have these if it's just a collection of sheets in a dashboard so up to you again it's another option now this last one you're probably going to laugh at me but i can't seem to figure out what it does <laughs> the show selections I've tried to find documentation online and I can't for the life of me figure out what it actually does. So in all honesty, I'm just going to say I have no idea what it does. <laughs> if someone can figure it out, please let me know. All right, now that we've done and set up all of this, we're going to go publish. Now the first time it does it, it may take a while. Obviously, the bigger your data, the more it has to prepare, the more it has to send off to the cloud. So give it time. Go for a coffee, relax. Uh, data, size, data sets this big are going to be as you can see a few seconds um, but I've also done ones where it's like a hundred million rows and it can do it in about five minutes so it really depends just have some patience don't just keep clicking okay once it's done with your default browser it's going to automatically open up to say okay we're all dead we're all done and here we go we've got those two dashboards in here so let's open one up Okay, so we've got them all here, pretty much exactly how we looked at it. All right, so nothing crazy there. Let's go back to budget. Okay, let's open up this workbook again. And actually, I think we'll leave it there for now. All right, so I'll see you at the next video.